it's Monday, the 14th of November, and tonight we're in Skerry's Rugby Club for what has turned out to be the fifth public meeting to hear about the plans from Fingal County Council for a giant sewage treatment plant in the area. And just like the other public meetings, this room is absolutely jam-packed. We're going to be asking people for the reaction and the response of the local councillors. Okay. I think we had an extremely good debate tonight. Um, I think one of the things is there's a very steep learning curve for people when they're trying to deal with this kind of technology. Um, and I think part of the difficulty is that there's been a complete failure to communicate to people about what this is about. To me, it's an absolute insult that the Minister, through the Council Management, should be proposing a, a massive sewage treatment plant that has no odour control facilities at all, that isn't being proposed to treat the water to tertiary, that has no provision for road infrastructure, um, and that uh, the, where the distances for the, this uh, large proposed plant would be too close to, to housing or, or to communities. And the fundamental problem is that this is the same old politics. If they were serious, and, and, and Emily Diebold from the Scaries News mentioned the fact that she does clean the beach and there's all this rubbish coming up, the problem is that that's the kind of stuff you get with secondary treatment. If we were to do tertiary treatment, you would actually get much better you would get much better water quality on your beaches permanently and you wouldn't be getting this rubbish on your beaches so it, we, we need to have an informed debate about this but the ministers the, the, the start of this process has been deeply flawed largely because a minister is not prepared to put the money into the kind of sewage treatment that we should have in this country and in this county you, you said something in, interesting in your, the middle of your presentation I, I got the impression that you thought that the decision about the final location had actually already been made no, I don't believe that's the case. I mean, my own personal personal view is, and, and you see, this is all about power and political power as much as political. There's not another general election for four years, four and a half years. The minister isn't particularly worried about a general election in four and a half years. They have other issues. And this is all going to be done and dusted in 12 to 18 months. Right? So they're going to make a decision halfway through their term, and they're perfectly prepared to, what, to make what they think is a, is, is a politically unpopular decision. My concern is that we need to deal with that real politic. We really do. And the question then is, if, we, if, we, if we're not powerful enough and strong enough, despite the best efforts of the community, to win this battle, then what can we do to make it better, the situation better? As it stands, the, the proposal is a disaster. It's no odour controls, no covered tanks, no tertiary treatment, no road infrastructure, inadequate perimeter boundaries, and so on and so forth. I'm concerned that, you know, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket on this, you know, and I think we need to think tactically as well as strategically. I think the community needs to make a very, very strong statement that they are not prepared to accept the proposal as it stands. And, and I think we also need to look at how can we transform our sewage treatment to tertiary level and cover tanks, because we do have problems. We've had problems in sores, we've had problems in scaries. Every community has had problems with these issues. Um, how can we move from secondary treatment and, and no odour control to odour control, tertiary treatment and proper road infrastructure for dealing with solids? We, this is the fifth public meeting and we, we've been to all of them and every one of them has been jam-packed with, with concerned people and everybody to a man and woman has, that we've spoken to is completely opposed to this. Where's democracy in all of this? That's a very good question. I mean, in a sense, I think people are, are now coming to, to grips with this, which is a quite a technical issue. But people are not stupid. I mean, they very clearly understand this is going to stink as it's currently proposed. It's going to potentially damage our coastal waters as it's currently proposed. The consequence of that, as was made clear at the meeting, is it could damage our, our agricultural uh, brand. It, it, could, it could damage our, our tourism industry as, as the thing is currently proposed. What is outrageous is they've actually taken this forward. You know, and this is all coming from the minister's office. He's saying, this is the amount of money I'm going to give you. I'm not giving you money for tertiary treatment. I'm not giving you money for covered tanks and, and odor sc uh, air scrubbing to remove odors. And that's the fundamental problem. And if nothing else comes out of this process, that message has to be communicated to him. Well, I tell you, it's just it's encouraging to come here tonight, see the people standing up there, great ideas coming forward. Now, if everybody acts together, that's what's needed here. And each community help each other. I think that's one thing that has come out strong from this evening, each community to help each other, not stand alone. I would just like to say that I wouldn't like to see it coming to a point that the county council would become bullies because they certainly bring something up to the top and then they turn. 
I'm one of the Skerries uh, Frosties. We swim all year round. There's about 50 or 60 of us. And we swim either here or in Rush, depending, you know. And uh, on behalf of us and all the other people that use this, fantastic, it's like a swimming pool for North Fingal. And they're gonna, they're gonna do this to us, it's incredible. And another thing I'd like to say, I have a good, very good relationship with Fingal County Council because I was involved in liaisoning for, with the, the work that was done in upgrading the accessibility to the swimming platforms here in Skerries of the Headland, a place called the Springers and the, and the Captains. And uh, I worked very well with them and they were delighted and they're people who have wheelchairs of access to these swimming areas. Yeah. And now they're coming along and putting this mega... Like, what are they at? I mean, I just, I, I just don't understand the logic behind giving a quarter of a million in to upgrade the swimming facilities in Skerries and then putting a mega... Waste treatment plant here, just beggar's belief. I just, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm st uh, Councillor Tom O'Leary here, Scary's residence. I'm living in Scary's 40 years. I've been here during the good times for tourism and when the fishing was very good here with 30, 40 boats up in the harbour. And what I'm listening to here tonight at the Scary's meeting, which was packed in the rugby club, I am very concerned for the Scary's area and the other areas near hand, up in Lusk and Cardiff. I'm sure you've mentioned it inside. Uh, we need to look at this plan again. As I go to more and more meetings, it's becoming more and more apparent that we need to change the plan. And the idea of smaller plants in areas that they will look after their own sewerage, like we do in Skerries, and like uh, Donabate takes care of Rush and Lusk, that sounds to me like a good idea. And it also will make more sense money-wise, because we don't have to spend such a big amount of money so quickly in order to deal with this problem. We can deal with it in a modular a planned way and I think uh, when we get in to see Minister Hogan and Minister Riley hopefully soon definitely I can vouch for Minister Riley we'll be able to make an impact. Minister Hogan is open to solutions particularly if they save money and we've got to look at that uh, but the environment is very important in this area and in this town and in Scaries we have to lift tourism in Rush, Lusk which, Lusk, which is a beautiful medieval town and Scaries and grow to, to our natural abilities both in farming and in tourism in this area and putting a monster sewage treatment plant smack into the middle of that is just crazy. You, you made a surprising and frank admission at the meeting that you originally voted in favour of this plan. What's made you change your mind now? Uh, I and 17 other councillors voted in favour of a large plant in the area. I took the advice of the county manager at the time. I was only a few months into the council. I wasn't totally aware of the issues. What's made me change my mind? The demand for the plant surely has gone down. Building has ceased, stopped. We have a large stock of housing. Everything is, uh, well, I won't say it's going backwards, but it's, it's slowed down remarkably. There's no way I would consider uh, pushing for a monster sewage treatment plant in the area. I do not believe the figures justify it. I think we need to review the figures. 2008, 2005 were the last time that the figures were looked at. I think they're out of date. So it needs, that's why I changed my mind. And I am seriously considering putting down a motion in the council to change that objective in the plan. We are allowed to review the plan every two to three years to see if it's keeping up with the demands in the area. That it's, what's the word? That it's realistic to the existing demands in the area. That the reason that was brought in before was to allow us to increase certain things. But in this situation, we should be decreasing. Councillor May McKeown, what, what is your response to what you've heard tonight? Absolutely positive. I was absolutely overwhelmed. Uh, uh, I think the presentations by the councillors were very well done, but preaching to the converted. I have to say the expertise of the people that have been there, done that, and, you know, wore the T-shirt, those people know what they're talking about. It is very important, that, as has been said, that, that everyone really gets together and fights for it. It's far too big. And I would certainly hope now that uh, Balbriggan will row in behind that as a town. They sort of feel, well, they have been, uh, you know, hard done by at times with, you know, sprawled planning and different things. But our beaches in Balbriggan is very, very important to us. Uh, the whole area of Fingal is the pride of... Uh, of it's ours, it's actually belonged to ours. But I have to say, and it has come up tonight at that there, that all of us in the Fingal Council as elected representatives are not happy with the fact that consultations are done. And as has been said earlier tonight, we hear about it. I can read things in the paper. 
and that's where I'm really dissatisfied, that if they had come to us at the beginning, talked about it, looked at the various options, instead they go and get uh, consultants in, pick out nine sites, and then make, we have to go in to battle then with the community and try and justify or to try and get rid of it. So it happened with the bin charges and all that. It's, it's, it, these managerial and administrative functions really is very frustrating for me. But I would hope that this will have a successful outcome. You know, more meetings like that. You've had good meetings, and there will be more. You know, so I, I, I never, I never cease to be amazed at the contributions from the local community. You know, I'm not into this people power. They need to have leadership. But there's always some people in the middle of all that that can really, really do well. And I, I you know, there was a little criticism of the elected representatives there from one of the contributors. He talked about the management, you know, having no confidence in it and elected representatives. But we're elected to be the people to do the best we possibly can. And I hope that we will come to some solution over this together. That's what it's all about. We're special. But as been said tonight, we don't want it to go somewhere else. We just don't want it here at all. Emily Diebold from the Scaries I'm from Scaries News. Yeah. What was your assessment of tonight's meeting? Well, I come from, as well as doing Scaries News, I also do Scaries Adopt a Beach, which is this initiative that I set up where we look after our beaches. And so from experience, I know what happens when there is a mistake because Barnagira has discharged raw, raw sewage into our sea. And myself and everyone else in our group end up picking up what ends up all along our beaches, all these plastic, you don't even want to know what we pick up. We can see it in the water, you know, it's that disgusting. And so something that is that much bigger, 10 times the size of Barnagira, we're really not, not willing to take that risk. No. And how would you assess the, the mood in there? <laughs> the mood in there, um, it's controlled anger, you know, and, and uh, Really what we want is anger because uh, we don't want this. You know, we want everyone to stand together against this. Given that none of the proposed sites is on your doorstep, I, what's your principal concern? Our principal concern is the outflow pipe. But actually, you say they're not on our doorstep. Skerries is on the doorstep of Russian Lusk. And so if, if they take any of those four sites in, in Lusk, we will suffer from the traffic, we will suffer from the air pollution, we'll suffer from the smell. The wind comes this way. So... Thanks very much. Thank you very Bernie Ann Condon, you're one of the organisers of tonight's meeting. Are you pleased with the turnout? Very pleased with the turnout. Um, I think it reflects the support that the Scaries population have against this actual project and the support for the other communities. Um, it, is, it was great to see so many public reps. It was unfortunate that James Riley, TD um, and Minister, wasn't able to make it. Um, but we, the councillors made a, a very good um, statement of support, the TDs made a very good statement of support um, and it, at the end of the day this is all about communities coming together and actually fighting this. And what, what's your involvement in the community? Um, as well as being in the SCA, um, I ha we, I'm actually working on a project uh, which is called uh, Bathing Water Quality. And it, it started two years ago when we actually had discharge from the Barnagira plant, um, which took the bathing qu quality in Skerries right through the roof. Um, and we are working with Fingal. We've been sampling the water for two years um, because we want the blue flag back. Um, but what it has shown to us is that how difficult it is for a coastal and beach area to work if you've actually got a sewage plant. We have to work very hard to make sure there is no discharge, that there is no bypass of treatment into the coastal waters. It's obviously very scary that we would actually have a plant ten times the size of Barnagira um, in being proposed here tonight and that the actual rationale for discharging into the marine water is because it's actually clean. Um, part of the EU directive actually says that the levels of uh, eutrophication, nitrogen and phosphorus, right, determine um, how good the water is and you cannot the EU stops you discharging into water that's maybe marginal on, on those characteristics. Of course, we've got nice clean water. We're fighting very hard to keep it cleaner. And what happens, we, we actually are now a target for the marine outfall. Because we've got clean water, they can actually put a biological load and put a eutrophication load into it because it's, a, it's clean. If it was dirty, you know, they wouldn't be able to do it. So it just seems very cynical, okay, that you would actually choose coastal water that's good quality um, to discharge into, you know, and it's in the reports when they, you, 
when you ask them, why do you choose marine outfall? They say, because your water is clean. Deputy, another meeting. Yeah, another meeting, uh, another packed meeting, um, and certainly uh, a meeting where it appears that all of the communities are beginning to come together, which is the desired outcome as far as I'm concerned. Do you think the mood is changing? Uh, I think there's a more pragmatic uh, mood developing. I think the, the shock has gone out of it to some degree. People are just trying to come up with ideas. How are we going to do this? How are we going to put the strategy together? So I think that's very positive. A question I, I've asked of some of the councillors is, given that so many people are opposed to this, everybody we speak to is opposed to this, and every public meeting is packed out the door, where's democracy in all of this? Well, uh, the situation at the moment is the, the local authorities have been kind of given power and power has been taken away from the elected representatives on the council. So that's a big factor in all of this. So decisions are taken by local authorities, uh, in this case, coming together and making a decision which affects us all. Uh, so maybe we have to have a fresh look over time at the powers that uh, have been taken back from elected representatives. But, but isn't this proposal a decision of unelected bureaucrats? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the point. It is now. It's been, it's been decided by uh, paid officials. And will you be opposing this in the, in the Dáil? Well, I have done last week. Uh, last, on Thursday last week, I got a special debate uh, on the matter and topical issues, which is a new development for us in Parliament, uh, and I managed to get a special debate on it. I made all the points to the, the Minister there in relation to what the people are saying right throughout Fingal, telling him that we've had enough, uh, it can't be the dumping ground for all of Dublin, uh, and we need to have fresh ideas, fresh thinking. And did you get any kind of response from the Minister? Well, the Minister, unfortunately, the Minister is kind of restating the, the facts, you know, that things have been done. Uh, his only responsibility is funding for the project uh, and that, you know, sometime in the future he may have to make a ruling in relation to a foreshore licence in relation to the matter. And therefore, he feels it's inappropriate for him to discuss it at this point. But we need, we need to have fresh thinking on it. Uh, and I think if we send a strong message from North County Dublin that we're not having this, I think it will be possible to force the minister to change his view. He's got to at least uh, revisit uh, the assumptions uh, and the rationale for it. Uh, you know, because I, I don't I don't believe it was ever it was ever the right approach. And I think now more than ever, it's certainly not. Well, I think it was an excellent meeting. We got so many different points of view, and I think the answer is straightforward and simple. Many more smaller units and much more treatment go for third, fourth, fifth treatment on the outflow pipes. That's the answer. Not having the big thing. Minister, from the minister down, the answer is no. We're, that's the answer. Well, that's it from Scaries. Just like the other meetings, plenty of angry people plenty of militancy, but what seems to be happening more and more is that people are becoming more and more articulate, more and more organised. Who knows what's going to happen next? We'll be in Swords on Thursday. See you then.